I'm Terry Friedman and um, I've been in education for 34 years. Um, I started off as a teacher of economics, went on to teach ICT and um, worked for local and central government and five years ago I went independent and now run my own consultancy and um, a website called ICT and Education. Parents are perhaps over-concerned about the safety aspects. ICT can be very safe if you know what you're doing and you, and you follow certain guidelines. And all schools and local authorities are very aware of the safety aspects. So I, I, I would say that, um, and, and also at home, parents I think need to and, and could, could know more about what their children are doing. So well, one, one of the things that... Um, that many parents do, which is not particularly good, is that they allow their child to have a computer in their own bedroom and then just leave them alone for hours and hours on end. It's, uh, and you can actually adopt some very simple strategies such as moving the computer from the bedroom into, into a family area and not allowing the child to spend hours uh, doing their own thing. And the other thing is, is you could actually ask your child what they're actually doing on the internet and who they're talking to and have a conversation. It doesn't have to be done in a kind of draconian parental type way. It can be done as a conversation. Um, so that's one thing. And I think another misconception is that um, uh, the, the, the internet is full of predators. And, and in fact, it isn't. It's actually a very small number or a small percentage of people who are like that, from what I can gather. And I think there's also a popular misconception that kids are playing games all the time, on, uh, either on the internet or, or you know, just at their computer, and that games are a particularly bad thing. And most kids, um, from the research I've done and read, don't spend their time playing games. That's number one. And number two, the games they do play tend to be educational. And in fact, from the research I've done, mo most kids, most of the time, spend their time... Um, outside of school doing things connected with school on the computer and the kind of people they're talking to over the internet are their, are their friends and they're people they see in school anyway. So, so some of the misconceptions that parents may have that kids are doing stuff that they shouldn't do, they're talking to people they don't know, that is not actually grounded in, in reality as far as I can see. There are some real advantages to what I would call an, an enlightened approach to ICT. Um, both in terms of uh, the internet and also games. If I look at the internet first, we've got things like blogs and wikis which enable people to, to communicate with, it, with each other over the internet and social networking, things like Facebook. And the reason those kind of things are, are very good is because they widen participation. So to take a very simple example, you could have someone who is very, very shy in class or very underconfident in, in a lesson situation and they will come alive when they're able to contribute if you like anonymously or certainly not in person via Facebook or a wiki or a blog or something like that. Um, blogs, because they're things which um, you can see from outside the school, uh, are, are, are able to facilitate parents seeing their children's work. So even if it's not possible because of the school setup for parents to actually log in and actually see their, their children's work, they could actually log in onto the internet and, and see it. Um, and in terms of games, games have all sorts of advantages for children. They, they enable them to, to take part in activities which would perhaps be dangerous for them to take part in if it wasn't a game. So for example, they can explore things like what it would be like to live on a desert island or to investigate a volcano not necessarily the kind of things you'd want your child doing during the course of a normal school day. Um, and they also enable children to explore, or, or youngsters I should say, to explore the underlying model of things. So for example, if you were looking at um, a game, or more properly called a simulation of how the British economy is run, if you were to undertake thing, uh, activities such as trying to create full employment, and looking at what happens to inflation as a result, you would very quickly start to get an idea of the underlying assumptions in the model. So um, both for very young children and for older children, games can be very, very useful. And in younger children, for example, even children as young as three or four, um, 
games machines have been used to stimulate their ability to write stories and also as um, uh, as means whereby they can become much better at mental arithmetic. So the kind of things you hear about in the news about children spending all their time on violent video games is not really actually true. It, even in terms of video games though, video games have been found to be extremely useful in improving reaction times. So even there it's not all bad news. And finally, I mean there are lots of benefits of um, the internet and what you might call e-learning, uh, but a couple in particular, if you take something like social networking, like Facebook, uh, that enables um, youngsters to communicate with each other and uh, to keep in touch, e even to actually get help. A lot of kids use Facebook to get uh, an MSN to get help with their homework and that sort of thing. That can be very useful. And e-learning also opens up the possibilities for children who are school phobic or who for other reasons can't actually attend school to actually play a full part and in fact um, on an anecdotal level I heard of a, uh, a case yesterday where um, someone whose son is away from school because he's actually got the flu um, was able to take a full uh, pretty much a full part in the lesson because a friend of his had a laptop with a webcam and was recording the lesson live and um, was actually feeding the teacher questions that he, the ill person, had. Um, and they're all, that was kind of unofficial use, but there are also official uses of that sort of thing. So the, the possibilities are very, very exciting and um, something that uh, all parents should encourage their children to get involved in and to find out what their children are doing, in my opinion. So, some things to be aware of as a parent is first of all it's very very easy for people over the age of about 25 to assume that youngsters know everything about using technology. Um, actually they're very good at picking things up on a very superficial level and they're very good at multitasking so you will see youngsters doing things like they'll, they'll be having a conversation in, in MSN and they'll be on the phone and they'll be listening to music and doing their homework all at the same time. But that doesn't mean to say that they know everything. Um, and, and so it's quite useful for parents to get involved in their child's education uh, as you would normally and to, and to try and find out about the technology they're using. In terms of keeping children safe, uh, there are a couple of things you can do. I've already mentioned the fact that you could bring, your, bring, bring the uh, family computer into a family area rather than allowing children to spend hours in, in the privacy of their bedroom. Um, another thing you can do is to actually install parental con controls on the computer which will enable you to A, block certain websites and also to see which websites children have been visiting. One other thing I'd recommend to, to everyone, uh, including obviously parents, is to make sure that you've got an anti-virus checker, a, a virus checker on the computer and that it's kept up to date. You can get free ones which can be updated every day and um, that really does keep your computer and therefore the family safe. Um, I also think from a personal safety point of view young people need to understand that especially in these days of the internet once you actually put, c commit something to writing in uh, a digital fashion it's there forever. So anything you write, any comment you make on a website, any photo you upload that is going to be there forever. And even if you were to, if you like, undownload it a few seconds after you've uploaded it, it would still be there because the internet is archived. Uh, so young people need to be taught how to keep themselves safe, not just from the point of view of um, the kind of things you read about sexual predators, but also in terms of future job prospects and stuff like that. You, they may not necessarily, your future employers may not necessarily appreciate photos of people being uh, kind of acting stupid. I think another important thing is is to be aware of the fact that um, there's a mismatch between what youngsters intellectually know and how they behave. So youngsters will actually be able to tell you what is safe to do and what is unsafe to do online. But they don't necessarily always go by their own advice and the research seems to be indicating that's because of um, uh, a, a lack of physiological development in, in the brain until you're about 23. In other words, your behaviour until you're about 23, 24 tends to be um, very risk-taking uh, and you can't 
you can't actually help doing that. Um, and therefore, my recommendation there would be to not just accept that just because your child says that they know what's safe and what's not safe, that you should necessarily just um, leave it at that. You should still actually engage in conversations with them to find out what they've been up to and to put them right, if necessary, from the benefit of your experience. Uh, another issue is this, is that not everything, uh, technology is not suitable for every person, for every activity all the time. And it's actually quite good not to spend hours and hours at a computer. And this is for um, uh, physical reasons, if you like. You can end up getting um, what is called RSI, uh, or, or you can end up just feeling unwell from being at a computer all the time. And also, sometimes a lot of people have found that to be creative, sometimes just using a pen and paper can be incredibly helpful. So, um, the final thing I would say, and I did allude to this before, is that it's very important to encourage your child that when they're looking for stuff on the internet to try and find several sources rather than just rely on the one, just in case the one source they happen to rely on or happen to pick up on um, has another agenda which may not be immediately obvious. In conclusion, yes, there are some disadvantages of using the technology. There are dangers to be aware of, but I think if you're sensible and, and um, you, you uh, approach it in the correct kind of way and have conversations with, with your children, then on the whole, the, the advantages, uh, advantages of the technology far outweigh the disadvantages.